Hi, welcome to Stories of Art. My name is Karel Huidekoper and today I'd like to tell you the story of this wonderful painting by Gustave Caillebotte. It's called Le Raboteur de Paquette, or The Floor Scrapers, and he made it in 1875. It was first exhibited at the Second Impressionist exhibition about a year later in 1876. But before I start, this would be the perfect moment to subscribe to my channel. It's that little button below the video and all you do is click on it and then the little bell icon next to it. That's all there's to it. So, done? Great, let's get started. Now, the first Impressionist exhibition had been held the year before, 1874. And for some artists it had been a huge success, for others not so much. But it was during that exhibition that the group had gotten their name, Impressionist. If you want to know exactly how, I made a video about that as well. There's a link in the description. But at the time, Kaibot was not yet part of the group. You see, the Impressionists were just a group of like-minded artists. They were also friends, they met in bars and cafes, and their meetings weren't anything official, it was just an informal sort of thing. It was just a group of people who talked about art and the direction they thought it should take. Because all of them had this feeling that art needed to develop, and that development should have a direction. So in that sense, it's quite literally an art movement. And it was probably in that year, in 1874, that Caillebotte befriended Monet and Renoir. And when the time came to have a new exhibition, it was Caillebotte who financed it. He did that because he was quite wealthy, which in many ways set him apart from the rest of the group. Another way was that he was about a decade younger than most of the other Impressionists. He was born in 1848 into a wealthy family that had made their money in textiles, mostly military textiles, which I suppose means uniforms. And they'd done very well in that. But Gustave's father, Martial Caillebot, had made a lot more money in real estate development, which, it must be said, was the big game in the 1860s and later in Paris as the entire city seemed to be redeveloped in what is called the Haussmann plan. That's when Paris got all these wide boulevards and these big intersections of many roads coming together. And it really made Paris look like the Paris of today. So Gustave had been born into money and gone to university to study both law and engineering. He practiced law for a while um, until he was called to join the army for the Franco-Prussian War. Now, when that war ended in 1871, he apparently decided that he needed to change and he started to study painting. And he studied under Léon Bonnat, a strict academian painter. He was actually a, a professor at the Académie des Beaux-Arts, which is a very different path from that that the Impressionists took. And clearly it's something that did not satisfy Caillebot, because he started looking for other ways. And I assume that's how he ended up with the Impressionists. And it's likely that he was one of the people that tried to form this loose group of friends and artists into a more sort of coherent group. Formerly it had been Degas who had tried to unite them, but it seems that Caillebotte now tried to do that as well. And in 1874 his father died, which meant that he, as the eldest son, became responsible for the family's fortune. He had a mother and two brothers, one of whom died in that same year, and his mother died a few years later in 1878. But in 1874 Gustave and his brother Martial clearly named after their father, moved into an apartment together of an apartment block developed by their late father, just behind the new opera in Paris. This is actually a picture of the two of them. The shorter one is Gustave, who is the older brother. The taller one is his brother Martial. And there they live together as two rich young bachelors. His brother Martial was a composer and a photographer, and Gustave made his studio in the apartment. And in that same year, I'm sure that he saw the first Impressionist exhibition and either before or after became interested in their methods and subject matter. Because that's one of the things that set the Impressionists apart from the academic styles. Where the Academy required serious subjects for their paintings, the Impressionists wanted to show the world as they saw it, as it came to their eyes. And in that sense, they were very much the successors of the realist movement of several decades before. But very different from the realists, they often wanted to show the world as if seen through their eyes, which meant from other angles than were traditional for art. Some did that by painting very quickly, capturing a particular moment, as Monet often did. Others, like Renoir, managed to capture the movement of people and light 
so well that you can almost hear them enjoy themselves. And the thing about Kaibot is that he admired his colleagues so much so that he collected their work. And he actually made one of the largest private collections of Impressionist paintings of his age. And for that reason, it's one of the ways he's been viewed for a long time as a sometimes artist, but mostly a collector of art. But then if you look at a painting like this one, it's clear that he was very much an Impressionist painter of the very highest quality. And like most Impressionist painters, he often made paintings of scenes outside in the countryside, but he also made a lot of cityscapes. This one, which will be the subject of a different video, is most likely his famous work in the United States. Here we see people walking around in the rain in Paris on these very clean streets in this clear urban space. The thing is that this was brand new stuff. These buildings had been built only a year or two before. Note, for instance, that there's not a tree in sight. And remember, Gustave's father had been a developer of many of these buildings. But then Gustave also made a number of scenes indoors, in these very same buildings, because the family, his father, his mother and brothers, had all lived in one of these larger houses, and of course later Gustave and his brother would themselves live in one of these apartments, newly built by his father. And he made quite a few paintings of life in these new buildings, like this painting of a man looking out across the street. It is most likely his brother Martial looking out of the window of their parents' house. Which brings us to our subject for today, because of course this is also an indoor scene, also set at home. And this is either his parents' house, where he had had a studio for a while, or the apartment where Gustave and his brother lived. And apparently, at some point, they needed to have their floor scraped. Now, this is simple, regular maintenance. Every few years, you would have to have your floor scraped because the boards, that's those planks you see there, they could get warped a bit. Also, these floors would be finished with a varnish that would get dirty, and you scrape that off and you get a new coat every, well, two to five years. This is hard work, obviously, and today we use sanding machines for it. But back then it had to be done by people sitting on their knees, scraping off that coat of varnish and the warped sides of the planks. And we can see that this is hard work, which is why these three men have taken off their shirts. You can see that they've been working for a while because you can also see there's these lighter lines all over the floor. That means that they first straightened them by scraping off those ridges of the warped wood. And, and now they're taking off the varnish. But what makes this a truly impressive painting is the strange angle in which you see it. It is as if the painter is standing in the doorway, looking down on these men on the floor, very much the way you would actually see it in real life. And painting from these angles had been influenced by the development of photography, because as cameras evolved, you could suddenly get pictures from unexpected angles. And remember, Gustave's brother was a photographer. And the other surprising thing is the light. You see, normally in a painting, the light comes from one of the sides or from behind the painter. And now it's coming from a strange direction, which is at the far side of the room that we see here. It's coming through the window at the end. And to a painter, this is a very unusual way to set up your picture, but he managed to do it perfectly. I also really like the way the men in the center and one on the right are looking at each other, perhaps to communicate something about their work, or perhaps they're just saying, why is this guy in the doorway still looking at us? Or maybe they're just hoping he will go away so they can have another glass of wine because note that bottle of wine standing right next to them, which of course is there to remind us just how very French they are. At first, Caillebotte offered this painting for the Salon, but the jury rejected it. The report said that the subject matter was too vulgar, which is kind of strange because people working had been a theme at the Salon for decades by that time, starting with the Stonebreakers by Courbet and some of the paintings by Millet had made it through the selection process as well. So apparently labor in the city was more vulgar than working in the countryside. It could also be that the fact that they don't have their shirts on made it more vulgar. Some art historians have made a big deal of the men being shirtless. Some have described it as erotic male nudes. I have to say I don't see that. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe you see it very differently. Let me know in the comments, but I see men at work, not in a sexual or sexualized way. Of course, we do get to see their anatomy pretty well. But as the painting was rejected for the Salon, it was automatically included in the Second Impressionist exhibition. Especially since Caillebotte financed the whole thing, 
he had a pretty good say in what got in and what didn't. He actually had eight paintings there. And this is another one of them. It's a very similar scene of floor scrapers, but as you can see, there are different floor scrapers. One fully dressed and with a bold patch, so apparently older. Also, the angle is less challenging, and so is the direction of the light. And I would have thought that this would be an earlier attempt, but in fact, it was painted after the one we are looking at today. But it's nowhere near as famous, and I guess that's because well, both the light and the angle are less spectacular, but also because it's in a private collection, so nobody gets to see it, except when it was on loan to the Brooklyn Museum for an exhibition a few years ago. The Floor Scrapers was not sold at the exhibition. Strangely, it wasn't even mentioned in the catalog. None of the works by Caillebotte were, which could mean several different things. One is that he decided to include his paintings at the last moment, or he didn't feel confident he fitted in with the entire group yet. In fact, Caillebotte hardly sold any work at all during his lifetime. Even when the other Impressionists became fashionable, his work did not sell. And that could very well be because he made very little effort to sell it. He wasn't picked up by the main art dealers that started to sell Impressionists, and it looks like he didn't try to get picked up either. He was much more focused on supporting the artists that he admired particularly Monet and Renoir. He didn't just buy their work, but for a time he supported them by paying the rent for their studios. And he was quite particular in his choices. Not all the people that had paintings in the Impressionist exhibitions were supported by him. And from that we can deduce that he was very invested in the idea of the Impressionist movement of being actually the thing that would bring art forward in that direction that he wanted. And it's therefore that he was probably very disappointed that by 1880, many of the original group of Impressionists had sort of moved on. The group, which had of course always been informal, started to really fall apart. And their last collective exhibition had been in 1879, and by that time not all of the original guys had participated. Caillebotte was disappointed about that, and in the early 1880s, he started to retreat from the group himself and bought an estate in the countryside. He started spending more and more time there, started doing other things, building and racing sailing yachts, for instance. But he always kept painting, although he did start to do it on a smaller scale, smaller in size, that is. Now, one of the tragedies in his life was that he believed that he wouldn't grow old. We can see that from the fact that he had his first will made up in his 20s. Then again, he had just lost both his father and his brother. And, in fact, he didn't grow very old. He died at the age of 45. And by then, he had another will that included what he wanted to do with his collection of Impressionist paintings. And there were quite a lot of them, about 70, by people like Pizarro, Monet, Renoir, Degas, so basically the top names. And in his will, he stated that he wanted the collection to be donated to the French government, but on several conditions. One of them is that they would be displayed in the Palais du Luxembourg, which is an old palace that at the time was a museum for contemporary art, that is art of living artists. And he wanted the collection to be moved to the Louvre when the artist died. And he did this because he specifically wanted to avoid the paintings to end up in the attic of a small provincial museum. Those were his words. And the person he asked to execute his will was Auguste Renoir, one of the painters whose works were in the collection. But the trouble was that the French government rejected the collection. And so Renoir ended up having to try and fulfill the wishes of Caillebotte. He did manage to set up an exhibition in Palais de Luxembourg in 1898. And eventually the French state accepted 40 of the works that were placed in different collections over time, but are now all in the Musée d'Orsay and are some of their most valued works. But perhaps surprisingly, the paintings by Caillebotte were not included in that exhibition in the Palais de Luxembourg. That is because they were not part of the collection offered to the French government. All his own paintings were left to his brother Martial. And his brother, at some point, donated the floor scrapers to the Palais de Luxembourg, where it was on display, and eventually it was transferred to Musée d'Orsay. But most of the work by Gustave Caillebotte stayed in the family collection, although they did start to gradually sell them in the 20th century. Many, if not most, of the buyers were American, which is why the majority of his works can be seen in American collections. Four of his paintings are in Musée d'Orsay, and as I said, this is one of them. So, if you want to see it for yourself, that's where you have to go. 
But before you do, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And of course, subscribe to my channel. I mean, it's fun, it's free, and it helps my channel. And if you hit the bell icon as well, you'll be notified when I post new videos. Anyway, enough for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you again soon.